Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The fellas head out to the Big Ten West as Minnesota goes on the road to play my Illinois Fighting Line. This has been my team. I this has been my team in the summer. They've been phenomenal this year. Dill, we're gonna start off with you though. What do you like to say to the Illinois fans that just absolutely grilled you last week? Being a hater, I don't know. You listen back. I just sound like a hater. I was making things up. I was talking about, I don't know. Talk, like all At sort one of, point, I think you said Spencer Petrus isn't that bad. I was just being a hater. And I think when you start to like something so much, I start to like hate on it. And that's what I was doing. I listened to this thing like, just weird Nothing made any sense. So it's just like all like, oh, I feel it in my gut that I was gonna beat him. And like you're you're right. This Illinois defense is for sure the truth. And I, yeah, I think they're gonna give this Minnesota team all they can handle. They're just too good defensively. This is gonna look as about big time football as it gets. If you thought Iowa, Illinois was big time football, this is gonna be pretty much exactly the same. This is two teams that don't have the most explosive offenses, and obviously we have to talk about Tommy Tommy DeVito's health, but both teams that want to run the football and they want to let their defense cook before we get into this matchup, which I just simply cannot wait to get into. Again, I just want to say thank you guys for all the support, especially the Illini fans. That's what college football is about, getting in the comment section, getting passionate about your team. I absolutely love that. Dill's actually a Michigan fan, but you were repping the Iowa colors, and so they all thought you are an Iowa fan. I, well, I mean, I did love. sound like it because nothing I was saying made any sense. Was I was, just, I was absolutely here for it, just and I reached out of my gut. I loved, I loved all the heat that they were bringing. That is, that is what football is about. So again, if you like the content, you like talking big time football, you like talking some college football, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get into it, Dill. I know you like Minnesota a lot, but I know you found a a, re, a renewed like for this Illinois team. What are your early feels as Minnesota goes on the road here to Illinois? You know, I think the the problem is going to be is if Minnesota can't run the ball and they didn't run the ball very effectively against Purdue, and Iowa's done it, or Illinois, I should say, has done a very good job stopping the run. You look at Wisconsin, they held them the negative yards, which is actually insane to think, but they did it. I don't, I, it's going to be a very hard, I just, it's going to be a very hard go at it, I think, for this Minnesota team because they're not designed to throw got back that many times they need to run the play action they need to be in third and manageable and i think that if they can't run it they're gonna be it's gonna be a problem yeah i think we have to start with the quarterback situation for the Illini because as much as tommy devito and you're not like the biggest tommy devito fan he does run the offense well he asks he does what illinois offense asks him to do he gets the ball on time he's able to use his legs to get out of trouble and extend plays Satowski, he's played a lot of football, but he he doesn't play what Illinois needs. Like you cannot throw an interception on the four yard line at second and goal. You simply can't. That's the type of stuff that loses those kind of games. That's what Iowa thrives off. And at one point, he almost fumbled it and it got returned for it for a, a, a scoop and score. And luckily, his elbow was down. But he puts the ball in harm's way too much. And if Tommy DeVito can't go, this is this is going to be a really tough game for the Illini. They're going to have to rely on Chase Brown a lot. And I just don't know how much you're going to see this Illinois team move the football against Minnesota. But on the other hand, I don't know how much Minnesota is moving the football in this Illinois defense. Yeah, and that's the problem. Without knowing what Tommy DeVito's status is for sure, and I, you got to think he's going to do all he can do to play. Yes. Because this is this is the big time last people, like This is one of those games they need to win to win this division. And it, it, yeah, it's just a huge spot for them. So I, I, I would think if he can do it, he's going to go, and and that will be a big boost because you're right. I think what gave them, what gave Minnesota a little bit of trouble was O'Connell. He's not a great athlete, but he's a good situational runner. He, he was picking up some first downs for them and extending plays in the pocket, and and that's what Devito does. He probably does it at frankly a higher level as much as he's not quite the passer O'Connell is. I think this game comes down to two things, in my opinion. And this game is going to be close, whether Tommy DeVito plays or not. It's going to be what team can run the football a little bit better. I mean, it is virtually impossible to run the football against this Illinois team. They're allowing 2.3 yards per carry. And all the guys that I listed last week, it's the same. And they all showed up. Keith Randolph, Newton, Tariq Barnes, Sidney Brown. I mean, these guys, that front seven is elite. 
And then in the back end, you might have the best two cornerbacks in the country in, in Witherspoon, and I'm blanking on the other guy's name real quick, Witherspoon and Jatavius Martin. I mean, those guys just get their hands on footballs. They get interceptions. And, and in man coverage, they're elite. And without a guy like Chris Alvin Bell to stretch the field for Minnesota, I don't really see them kind of pushing the ball down the field, and I don't really see them running the football, even if Ibram's, uh, Muhammad Ibram is, is ready to go. And so, yeah, that's the – I mean, the thing I think you are – discounting a little bit is they did move the ball okay against Purdue and those tight ends still do play really good ball that yeah. Jackson number nine for Minnesota too you got to watch out for him because I think he is a legit player so I actually I feel like you I don't know if you watch that uh, Purdue game for Minnesota they did drop a touchdown in the end zone they did have two batted ball like they had some pick balls that were, were uh, tips I think they're a little better than that. I frankly, I think yeah. they're better than Purdue if they play over and over. I think they win the majority. That's not to say though that this Illinois team can't beat them because you're right. When you think about what Illinois can do, is they can run the football and they can play really good defense, and that's a good recipe I think to to beat a team like Minnesota because, I mean, if you can just get it into a gutter a gutter battle of really low scores, you you can beat teams. And that's what I think you're gonna see. I, I think you're gonna see both teams. You, another thing, I mean, whether Ibrahim or Chase Brown, that's going to be a major story, which running back is able to find more success on the ground, assuming Muhammad Ibrahim plays. The next story is turnovers. Illinois has been elite at first in, forcing turnovers, over two turnovers a game. Short fields are going to be key. Special teams are going to be key. And I think this game is going to be very low scoring. Again, whether Tommy DeVito plays or not, if Satowski plays, it's going to be very, very low scoring. They're really not going to let him have any opportunity to give the ball to Minnesota with a short field. Special teams, running the football in turnovers. Dill, I want to get it to your pick. Illinois, Curtin, this is – I get it. It's with quarterback two. I know they're compensating for that. Illinois at home, six-and-a-half-point underdogs. What is your feel for this game? What is your pick for this game? That just – it feels awfully – like they're giving – Illinois a lot of points. I don't know. Yes. I, mean, I, th- I feel like this game's going to be very low scoring. The over under, what is it? 38. 38. It's going to be low. So when you got a 38 point spread, I like to cover seven, you kind of got to beat a team pretty handily. And I just, I don't really see that. And I'm, I'm not saying I love Illinois to win this game. Cause I do think you, your quarterback and Tanner Morgan, I think as much as people are getting on him for the three picks last game, I don't think if you watch that game, you think, Oh, he played really bad. So I, I still think Minnesota is a little further along in what Illinois is trying to be eventually. But again, I don't see this being a high scoring game. And, and when you got to cover six and a half, that's not like an attractive number. I don't think for Minnesota. Yeah. Give me, give me six and a half for Illinois. You're spotting me six and a half points at home with how good this defense is. You give me that all day. I would also take Illinois in the money line. I think they win this game. This is my team. So Take that with how you will. I'm a little bit biased. I've kind of fallen in love with what Bielma's has done with this program and how good this defense is. And Ryan Walters, Illinois fans, enjoy it while it lasts because he's going to be head coach somewhere soon. I mean, that what he's done with this defense, it was good last year with how bad Illinois was. Like people weren't telling you when they were five and seven, the defense was actually very good. A lot of people are like, oh, you're losing Kirby Joseph, you're losing some other guys. It's not going to be as good. It's better. It's better. And what he's developed with that front seven and that secondary extremely impressive if Tommy DeVito plays that's a massive hammer on the money line well I, I, if, if that if DeVito plays it goes to probably three immediately at worst yeah. so I, I yeah and I, I I'm with you I I really do hope DeVito plays just because it does add the the juice you kind of want for this matchup I just for the sake of Illinois for the sake of the Big Ten West I think this is a game you want to go good on good. I don't want Ibrahim to be out, and I don't want oh, I want I want them all to play. This game is going to be, and again, most of the national college football fans are going to be rolling their eyes at this game as it's like 12-9. to 9. This is classic Big Ten football. I, I love this kind of stuff. I think another key, and, and we'll wrap it up on this, get some of those wide receivers down the field. I mean, Pat Bryan, Brian Hightower, and then Isaiah Williams. I get he had a tough game, two fumbles. He's still the most electric player probably outside of Chase Brown you have on offense. Go back to him. He's one of your best playmakers. You're going to want to hit some explosive plays. The chances of either DeVito or Satowski marching this offense down the field against Minnesota is hard. If you can hit a few explosive plays, get yourself some easy, quick points. Minnesota doesn't really have that. They don't have a playmaker without Chris Altman Bell on the outside. 
if it's not Mo Ibrahim kind of ripping off an explosive run, they don't really have that explosive playmaker on the outside. I know you mentioned Daniel Jackson, but I, I think Illinois has some proven playmakers on the outside. Minnesota, if they struggle with anything, it's probably stretching them sideline to sideline. Get those guys in space, and I think you'll be able to capitalize on some explosives. That's the key to the game, running the football, turnovers, find some explosive plays. I mean, that's the nice thing about Chase Brown is you know he's got, like, you give him a craze, he's going. And that's that's a big part of what that Illinois team's done, I think, frankly, all year. Yeah. So add that. And that offensive line is – they got some horses up front. They took they're two tough. They, were, they weren't tough in the past, like, but they're they're getting really tough there, and you kind of expect that out of Bielma, but they're they're doing it. And Bielma came in, right? He called out pretty much the whole offensive line last year. He goes right to the he Juco where he takes out two guys who are just absolute bulldozers. from, And they're running the football really well, and this is what Brett Bielma came into Illinois to do. God, I love this team so much. I can't wait for noon. This I mean, is such a sick game. This is going to be such a good game. All right, we'll wrap it up on that. Give me that Illinois money line at plus 200. Even if DeVito is not playing, I think they take care of business. Again, we appreciate you guys checking us out. Again, if you like the content, subscribe to the channel. No more Illinois hate from the boys. They've gotten their respect. We appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.